Exchange for Media. Today we have with us Polomi Roy, who is the Chief Marketing Officer of RHS Global. She has spearheaded many campaigns uh, revolving around transgender, sex workers, acid attack survivors. Welcome uh, to Exchange for Media, Polomi. It's a pleasure to have you. Hello, everybody. Pleasure is completely mine and lovely, lovely meeting you. How are you? I'm very well. So uh, congratulations on this new campaign that you've just uh, launched, just, just Empower One, uh, which is dedicated to spreading awareness about uh, women acid attack survivors, if I'm not wrong. And also your last campaign was about being equal. So I want to ask you, Polomi, what has uh, led you to, you know, uh, conceive this campaign and this idea and social causes, bringing them into your campaign? What has driven you towards them? Thank you so much uh, for acknowledging all the campaigns. I'm so glad that you have come across both our campaign. Uh, uh, so uh, we'll talk about Just Empower One first. Uh, to be very honest, Just Empower One happened to us two years back. Uh, we actually got into a phase of demonstrating what we believe our brand purpose is. So RSH Global, uh, the purpose of RSH Global is to make a, a you know, quality product at affordable price point because we are a mass brand. And uh, while we have figured out the purpose for ourselves, we wanted to demonstrate the same and, you know, to the to the world. And instead of just making a, a campaign about it, or like a video ad about it and talking about it, we said, you know, we genuinely need to do something which, which makes us believe that we what we say uh, and what we believe is something we are here to do. And that's when we started searching for uh, an avenue to demonstrate the same. And I remember uh, walking up to our chairperson and telling him that, um, can we make uh, products to support extremely sensitive skin uh, at affordable price point? Because we are manufacturers. We are not only man, uh, you know, marketers and sellers. He said, yes, we can. But what's in your mind? I said, you know, uh, while we were talking of skin types, you have realized that most uh, you know, skincare company talk about three to four skin types, oily, combination, dry, uh, sensitive skin. Uh, what is the most sensitive skin that we can think of? And we said it's of a burn, back, um, uh, burn uh, victim or an acid victim survivor. And, uh, you know, after they recover, uh, their skin becomes very sensitive. And uh, if we as a brand think of it and we start joining the dot, we say that we are a mass brand and we can make quality product at affordable price point. And uh, we, we realized that most of the acid attack survivors are from mar uh, economically weak background, right? Uh, they are more exposed to walking on the streets and that's how this crime happens to them. And it's, it's, it's a gender based, it's a gender violence. So uh, what happens to them after they survive? Their skin becomes very sensitive. Obviously, there is another. Uh, there is a lot of psycholo psychological and physical needs that they have. Uh, I went and spoke to him and said, you know, can we then claim or can we even try to make products for these women uh, from basic products like moisturization, sunscreen, uh, and you know, face washes. Um, because they have very sensitive skin, we have to be very careful about what we do. And can we price them at a point which is not very expensive because they come from economically weak background? I can't expect that. Of course, in the market, there are products available, but they're mainly derma products and extremely expensive. Uh, that was the moment of truth for us that, you know, can we do this as a brand? If we are able to make these products, and that will be the best way to showcase what we stand for, that we can make quality product at affordable price point. That was the germ of the seed. And the campaign was called Skin of Courage. So we launched a uh, joy sensitive range. Uh, we tied up with the uh, Chopak movie. Uh, we started speaking about this entire concept of skin and how, uh, you know, this, this products that we had been distributed through NGOs to 500 uh, survivors took their feedback, they were tested, tried, no complaints, and that was the first phase. While I was working with uh, on this campaign, I came across a couple of NGOs that we were working with, and one of the NGO is uh, Atijivan, and it, had, it is headed by this woman called uh, Pragya. 
So since I was very deeply involved with her in this campaign, we did, because there were a lot of parameters, the product that we yeah. made, whether uh, you know it had to uh, reach, tick mark all the boxes. We were talking about uh, you know, very, very hypersensitive skin of survivors. Nothing could go wrong there. So every uh, single day we would be in touch with her, talking to her, understanding her. One such conversation that I was having with her and she, and I said, you know, now that I'm deeply working with her, what are the challenges she faces? And she said something, you know, Paul, me, there's something we could do. I said, what? Uh, she said, I'm dealing with these girls on a daily basis. I think uh, after they survive the attack, there are surgeries that are needed for their physical well-being. And uh, after that, we also counsel them. What can give them a dignified life is a financial independence because most of them come from extremely poor background. Uh, after this happens, they are not never taken back by their families. Some of them support, some of them don't. The entire need uh, pyramid of a normal human being turns out for them. That uh, was a moment I said, you know what? I being a corporate, I think this is an area where I could do something. And I came back uh, and spoke to my management that why don't we do something like, uh, you know, and why don't we do something to get financial independence to these girls? And that was the second phase where we did just hire one. Uh, while, uh, while we did just hire one, uh, there was some learning from that campaign as well. We did it with LinkedIn. We asked people to hire. We promised to hire a survivor ourselves. During that phase, I had a learning that, you know, most of these girls are not very well educated. So they wouldn't have completed the class 10 young girls. Some of them were housewife. How does a corporate then work towards it? Like how, do, you know, you would need certain basic requirements. So the third leg and um, was refining the campaign and the end of our marketing efforts into just empower one. I said, you know what, we need to have a sweep role strategy to do this. So with Atijivan, what we first did is that we will hire girls in our organization first, train them. So Pampa Das, who is working with us for the last one and a half, two years, uh, she was a graduate. The good part of it was that. So we started getting CVs from her, you know, segregating CVs with girls who have completed their basic education and then give them vocational training and start teaching them how to go about it. So she was initially a beauty advisor. Then we got her into the e-commerce department. Then we said, OK, you know, now uh, we need to talk about the fact that there, you know, equality is not only about a man, woman, tug of war. There are other small segments like this of people who deserve a chance. They may be small in number. So in India, every year, the number of registered will be some 500, 200 to 500 cases. Even though it's small, that does not mean they do not get the chances that you and me get. So on the basis of that, we started doing Just Empower. We tapped into the pop culture by using filters, AI. We uh, spoke to share chat and more because we wanted it in more number of regional languages so that it just does not become one, you know, just one like or one thing. We wanted to actually spread the word and talk about the fact that empowerment is a need of this hour and empowerment can bring equality and equality is the need of the hour. Uh, so for every support that we collected on this campaign, we said we'll donate rupee one from our end. So that money will now goes to Atijivan Foundation. She uses that money. Now, either there are girls who are very small, class eight, nine, wouldn't have completed, help them to complete their studies. Or maybe girls or women who uh, will be of a certain age start some kind of you know handicraft that she can do from home and sell. So at the end result should be empowerment. So from the first step of skin of courage to just how a higher one and now just empower one. This has been the journey of just empower one. It also ties back to the other campaign being equal because joy when we conceived it and the brand space that we operate in is we say every woman is born beautiful. That is beautiful by nature. Uh, you were not born with chipped nails, dry hair, flaky skin. We all were born with normal skin. All you need to do is 
maintain yourself and that's the product we make we do not claim fairness taller darker thinner nothing so as a organization which is homegrown we abstain from a huge category like a 3000 core fairness category we completely abstain from we do not make products in that category at all as a principle we have not stepped into that category so when we talk of uh equal when we talk of uh, women and the stereotypes attached to it i think there are three four important pillars that you need to work on which will build this entire thing one is equality one is empowerment another is inclusivity and they are all you know uh, interlinked with each other all of this put together can you uplift a thing and when i say it I, I, of course our 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 entire uh, our core is targeted to women consumers yes but uh, i think there are so many sub cast sub sections within women and men which where where i think there there has to be more equality it's just not uh the the bigger subsection of human race is a man and a woman so i think uh, we talk of equality uh, of a woman a lot more within that group also there are so many other sections there is an lgbtq community there are uh, you know there are disabled people who are smaller in number but they deserve the similar so i think equality inclusivity all of these have to come at a broader spectrum that it, it is for everybody and everyone and you need to choose the ones that you want to support so as a brand and while we respect all of it we pick and choose certain subjects where we really feel we can contribute uh, uh me being a skin care brand i would prefer in this zone rather than nutrition because i have some expertise and some authenticity to speak to courses so that's how we make our choices of picking up the campaigns and working towards a particular cause that's so wonderful it's been a very insightful uh... journey oh for you and for for me to listen to it um my next question to you is that so your last two campaigns had uh, bollywood actors priti sanand and disha patni um for your sunscreen and your face wash uh these days a lot of brands are going the non conventional way which is the social media influencers uh, if i may say so are you also going to go right. are you also going to take that route or are you already taking it if you can throw some light on that so i again uh, it is a good fun thing that my uh, my seniors keep i keep reiterating this once and again i think uh, i i don't know as indians and in the indian subcontinent we we never been a country of uh, or we have already always been a country of and so uh, nothing is like an off and on things keep adding on of course micro level influencers macro level influencers matter uh endorsements with celebrity have a different agent uh, you have to define the objective like why do you need a you, you, you know a bollywood celebrity to endorse why do you need an influencer so and why is it that they can't coexist uh they can't coexist for only one reason because of budgetary constraints if you have that you have to choose either or but if given a choice that you can have it then the ideal situation is to understand that what agenda is it going to fulfill for your brand and if you can have both the kpis chalked out together that what what is what is this doing to the brand journey on the therefore the business uh, you you have both uh, now the emphasis on both we of course have been into influencers activity as well but we're not completely dependent we don't it's not an or for us it's an and having said that being an fmcg brand and a mass brand we thrive more on television with a celebrity our spends over there are more as compared to this uh so I, it's going to coexist and there is going to be variation in terms of the money that i allocate but there's never, we, we've got a lot like for example when i did the being equal campaign uh, last year with ipl we had a whole of good influencers we wanted that to happen and so we we also had our celebrities talking about the same because it was a larger context discussion that we had okay so uh, in that space also you have to be like very um, you have to understand that there are content creators and there are influencers influencers yeah. in the sense are some people like okay i use products i show using this product and this is how i look and all that 
But then uh, the good part is of late, there are such great content creators that are available. And if you use them rightly, so we did use Kusha Kapila, we did use Malika Dua when we were talking about the equality game, you know, and they all came across talking about the, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, being equal campaign in their own versions in, in the way they could express. Some of them spoke about who, we, we did something called who equals the game for you, you know. They spoke about that. They spoke about their experience. So we went to content creator. Again, on, on a daily basis, we do have some micro uh, influencers who talk about products and their efficacies and application and all that. So I don't think it's an uh, or situation for me over here on my brand. It is an and situation, but definitely uh, the percentage of the budgets that I allocate to promoting with a celebrity on television is definitely more than what I do uh, on social media with influencers and content creators. Great. And talking about advertising budgets, uh, would you like to share with us what budget have you set aside and you know what would be the media mix? And if you could I tell us about your, uh, your agency as well. Give you an approximation of the budget. Uh, yes, our media mix definitely, um, we have TV, social media, digital which includes search and all of, all of that uh, we do a lot of activations uh, we're not much uh, heavy into print outdoor or uh, print and outdoor we're not that much heavy. it's mainly a combination of television social uh, digital uh, we do a lot of spends on e-commerce platforms uh, we do a lot of spends on uh, retail uh, branding uh, branding at the retail space and uh, a lot of BTL. That's the mix uh, broadly that we have. And uh, budgets have been more or less constant for us for the last couple of years. It is, I have got some, uh, we, we, we do around 150-ish to 200-ish uh, kind of spends over the year. To be best Great. Great. And anything about your creative agency who's uh, in coming up with the campaigns? Who's your creative uh, advertising oh. agency that you uh, have on board? Yeah. We have done something very nice a couple of years back. I think I, I, I would like to use this as an opportunity to say that we have a lot of creative partners, okay, uh, and collaborators at an individual level more so. Um, conceptually, it does happen in-house. Like I have a team and my team, we come out with concepts and uh, we don't have a, re a creative agency on a retainer basis with us. Okay, we do have creative partners for executing writers who write with us. Uh, conceptualization happens most in-house and uh, of course there are uh, people who help us execute it which is a production house and stuff like that um, collaboration happens across at all level with different people but as of now if you had to ask me if there is a creative agency on board on a retainership basis with us uh, no not that we do it uh, in-house and then get it that's amazing uh, my last question before i let you go so RHS has uh, three brands uh, under its umbrella, if I'm not wrong. There's Joy, there's Caris, and x -Men. Yeah. So I want to know, is RHS planning to expand uh, within the country or globally? Are there any more products in the pipeline? What can you expect? Right. So I tell you what, RSH is uh, the, the mother company. We do have other brands, but predominantly we are known in the market for Joy, and that takes more than 85% of our business. Joy as a brand is available across India as well as other 40 uh, different countries, right? And uh, Caris is, uh, yeah, works beyond the SAC countries. Uh, the name Caris happens beyond the SAC countries. And uh, categories, yes, we have a bouquet of um, products that we have already launched last year. So we we launched a couple of good stuff like serum. We had launched our, uh, you know, creams, the night cream and the day cream and other other treatment cream. We we have launched new versions of a couple of our existing creams. We have forayed into with three four new uh, beautiful offerings in sunscreen as well. Uh, face washers are coming up with new ingredients and new offerings. So the uh, our focus, if I have to give you three categories in which we really, really want to keep our uh, dominance. One, we've been known for cream and moisturization. Uh, so that category, lotion and cream, we want to sustain our market share for sure. Uh, face wash, we've been very aggressive and we've seen great results. We have created some of new products that also that we have launched. It is, um, we had 
initially four to uh, you know four offerings now the offerings in the face wash space has increased a lot we're going to go very aggressive with face wash and sunscreen is another category where we were existing but we never wanted to uh, we didn't spend too much on the ATL space or, or too much of marketing efforts were not given which we started this year and we have also launched a couple of um, beautiful products like a mineral sunscreen uh, something like an invisible sunscreen, uh, a tinted sunscreen, an SPF 40 sunscreen. It, it, it's, 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 um, the products are amazing and we really feel that it is a game-changing opportunity for us in, sun, uh, in the sunscreen category. These are the three focus categories. Other than that, there are um, products like serums, uh, three to, uh, two to three types of serums that are available. The various types of body lotions are available. Uh, but they're not ATL promoted, promoted on ATL. They're available on every e-commerce uh, website. So as of now, we have our hands full when it comes to the number of uh, products that we have. We know up for product focus products and the geographies that we need to you know focus on uh, we've been working on two geographies which is west bengal and uh, maharashtra very aggressively we're going to continue the same over here and of course north india is our priority market because we hold good forth there so that's more or less the mix that we have right now and the work that we have in hand <laughs> Thank you so much, Polami. Thank you for talking to E4M. It was a pleasure having you. And Thank we wish you all the best with your journey ahead. Thank you so much. The pleasure was all mine. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.